Hello, welcome to another chapter in contemporary mathematics, graph theory. So here we are going to learn about graphs, puzzles and map coloring. So what are graphs technically? The graphs we consider here are the networks, for instance, social networks for Facebook, Twitter, you make connection from one person to another person to another group of people. So that is a connection set which we consider here as graphs. So the outline of the course comes as follows. We will learn the terminology of the graph correctly. We will apply Euler's theorem to trace graph. We will model some real life situations using graphs. We will use Fleury's theorem to find Euler circuits. Utilize graph coloring to simplify a problem. So let's begin with the definition of a graph. What is a graph? A graph consists of a finite set of points, which we call them as vertices or nodes. For example, if you look into it, we denote them A through E with dots with the capital letters where they represent vertices. And the lines which are going to connect each vertices with the other vertices are called edges. So they join the pair of vertices. So things to remember here are going to be vertices are labeled in capital letters. Certain types of graphs are called networks. So the edges are the lines connecting the vertices and vertices are and the nodes are the set of points. So the example of a graph is given here. Next, we will see how to trace a graph. So to trace a graph means we start at some vertex and draw the entire graph without lifting the pencil and without going over any edge more than once. For example, let's look into this graph. This is the shape of an envelope. Note here the edge AD and BE are intersecting but they do not form a vertex. Now let's see whether we can trace this graph without going over any edge more than once. Yes, of course we can do it. Let's say one possible way will be we start at E, the vertex E here and then we go to A. From A we go to D, D to E, E to B and then from B we go back to D then from there to C, B and A. At this moment we are trying to see whether we can trace a graph or not without lifting the pencil. So yes, it is possible for this graph. One possible way. You might be able to find more than this path. Now let's move on to graph tracing with another example. So there is a river called Pregol River in Prussia which divides Coinsberg area into four distinct sections. Two sets of lands A and D and two islands. They four, these four land sections are connected by seven different bridges. So the question here is starting at some point whichever the land direction place is can you visit all the parts of the city crossing each bridge exactly once and return to the starting point? So this is a real world problem. Let's try to model using the graph theory. So we have the landmarks which we will use them as vertices. So A, B, C and D will be considered as vertices. Now we will connect those bridges as edges. The land A and island B are connected by a bridge. So we will have an edge here A, B. Land B and land D, island B and land D are connected. So we will have an edge here B, D. B and C has a bridge. So that will be an edge here. C and D has an edge. So right here, another C and D edge here. So we will have this shape. 
So this is a graph. Now the question for us is, can we trace this graph without lifting the pencil? So you can try to attempt. The answer is going to be no. Why the reason is provided by Euler? We are going to learn how to do that in a couple of slides. So in summary, this graph, the real life problem, Convert it into mathematical graph model cannot be traced without lifting a pencil. Now, let's look into a few more definitions. Let's see when a graph is connected. We say a graph is connected if it is possible to travel from any vertex to any other vertex of the graph by moving along successive edges. If we cannot do so, then we call them as non-connected graph. Other terminology is a bridge. In a connected graph, an edge such that if you remove that edge, that graph would no longer be connected, then we call that edge as bridge. Connected graphs are often called as networks. Let's see an example. So here there are two disconnected graphs, A, B, C and D, E, F, G. We cannot go from C to D without a connectivity in between. So if we were to have that, we call the edge CD as bridge and this whole graph will be a connected graph. If we did not have this bridge CD, then that graph will be considered as non-connected graph. Let's look into a few more definitions. Let's look into degree of a vertex. So a degree of a vertex is a number of edges joined to that vertex. And if the degree, if the vertex of a graph is odd, it is because the degree of the vertex is odd. And vertex is considered even because the degree is even. So let's do one example to figure out odd and even vertices in a graph. So question here is, consider the following graph. Find the degrees of vertices of the graph and then determine which vertices are odd and which ones are even. So let's make a table where we will have vertices, degrees and to decide whether they are odd or even. Let's begin with vertex A. How many edges are connecting? This is AD. AD. There are two ADs and one AB. That means in total three edges. So its degree is three. And what is the is it odd or even? This degree three is going to be odd. So likewise, let's find out for B. B has one, two, and three. Three edges, so that means degree three. For C, C has 1 and 2, so that means 2. D has 1, 2, 3 and 4, so D is 4. E has none, which means 0. So now we can decide odd or even depending on these values, degree values. Keep in mind 0 is even. So now that we have figured out odd or even where this is and the degree, Let's move on to Euler's theorem. So earlier we looked into how to trace a graph without lifting a pencil. Now we are going to define a theorem which is called Euler's theorem. It states as follows. A graph can be traced if it is connected and has zero or two odd vertices. So let's look into examples. There are three graphs given here and we'll see which ones are traceable. So let's begin with first one. So condition here we need to check. First thing is whether the graph is connected or not. So let's check whether the graph is connected and whether it has either zero or two odd vertices. So the first graph it is connected. There are no disconnected. It is connected. Now let's look into the degrees and its odd or even conditions. So 
vertex A 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Likewise for B we have 5. For C we have 4. D we have again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And E we have 5. Except C everything else is odd. Is it traceable? Actually no because it has more than zero or two odd vertices. Now let's move into the next example. Again, first condition is it connected? Yes. Now let's move into figuring out the degrees. A has one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four. I'm sorry, one, two, and three. So three degree three. B, it has 1, 2, 3. C, it has 5. D, it has 3. So, all of them are odd vertices. So, again, not traceable because it has more than 0 or 2 odd vertices. Now, let's look into the last part of example 4. Again, is this graph connected? Yes, let's move on to figuring out the degrees of each vertices. So A, it has 1, 2, 3. Likewise, let's fill out all 6 vertices. B, it has 2. C, it has 3. D, it has 4. E, it has 2. And F with 4. And let's fill out all the even conditions. If you notice, there are only two odd vertices. So, yes, this graph is traceable. Now, what is the strategy to use to model a graph? So, like in the Coinsberg Bridge problem, there were four bodies of land. So we identify them as set of objects which we denote them by vertices. And then we, do, we identify the relationship among the objects. For instance, in that example, we had bridges to connect them. So those bridges are considered as edges. So we figure out the relationship and the objects, then we can model them into graphs. So now let's look into a few more definitions. So Euler's theorem related definitions. A path in a graph is a series of consecutive edges in which no edge is repeated. And a number of edges in a path is called the length. If a path containing all the edges of a graph, then we call the path as Euler path. If an Euler path that begins and ends at the same vertex, then it is complete, right? So this is called as Euler circuit. A graph with all even vertices contains an Euler circuit, then it is called Eulerian graph. Let's look into an example. So the question here is to consider this graph find all possible paths from vertex A to D. So here, vertex A is here, D is here. There could be several possible paths. So let's begin with a path, let's say A, C, D. How many consecutive edges are there? One and two. So the length is going to be two A, C and C, D only, so two. Now there are possible other possible paths. It could be A, E, D, or A, B, C, D, or A, E, C, D, or we could even have A, B, C, E, D. In some way, we need to go from A to D. That's it. So let's find a few paths and their corresponding lengths for A, E, D. There are only two edges, so length is two. For A, B, C, D, there are A, B, C, D. So, just three. 
Likewise, A, E, C, D, 3. Now, second question. Is there any oil apart? If yes, give 1. What is oil apart? A path containing all the edges of a graph. So, yes, there is one, or maybe more than one, but for instance, we can find an Euler path, which is A, B, C, A, E, C, D, E. It did not go more than once over one edge, and it contained all the edges. So, this is one of the Euler path. Now, the next question, is there any Euler circuit? What does Euler circuit means? From the Euler path, you have to start and end at the same place. So, is there any? If you try to find, I don't think you're going to find, so, no. There's no Euler circuit. Let's look into another example. So, First question is, find some paths in this star-shaped graph. So, start at A, find some paths. There can be many paths. Let's consider A, B, A, D, B, E. Other path A, C, E. You could have many more paths. Now, is there any oil path? If yes, give one. Yes, of course, there is oil path. So, one could be? A, C, E, B, D, A. Is there any Euler circuit? Yes, of course. The path already given in part B itself is Euler circuit. It starts and ends at the same place and it is already an Euler path. Euler path means it has all the edges contained and only once. So, of course, we have an Euler circuit. Now, we are going to figure out how to find an Euler circuit, which is using Fleury's algorithm. So Fleury's algorithm goes as follows. If a connected graph has all even vertices, then we can find an Euler circuit beginning at any vertex and traveling over consecutive edges according to the following rules. First one. After you traveled over an edge, erase it. If all the edges connecting to the particular vertex have been erased, then erase the vertex too. Next one, important one. Travel over an edge, which is a bridge, only if there is no alternate. If you raise the edge, which is a bridge, then you no longer have connected graph. So have to be careful. When you have a bridge, Travel only if there is no alternate. Right. So, let's begin with an example. How to use Fleury's algorithm to find Euler's, graph, Euler's circuit. So, consider the graph. So, we're going to consider this graph. So, if you notice here, if we were to use the Fleury's algorithm, we need to make sure this graph is connected, first thing. That is true. And then, we need to check whether this graph A has all even vertices. So, start with A. A has 1, 2. So, it's 2. C, 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, even. B, 4. That means even. D, even. F, even. And then L, 1, 2, 3, 4, even. Likewise, if you notice, every vertex here has even, degree even. So, so all A through L vertices are all even vertices. And we also need to figure out, is there any bridge? So, if you look closer, the edge FL is actually a bridge. So, we have... All the observation necessary marked down. Now we can start writing down our path. So the efficient road which we are trying to find. So we are going to start at vertex F. Then we will travel through F, G, G, H, H, I and I, L. 
Again, do not travel through the bridge LF. Since we traveled through all these edges, we can simply raise those edges and those corresponding vertices because there's no longer connectivity. Now we are at vertex L. Now let's again travel through other set of edges which is not a bridge. So let's start with L K K I I J and J L. Once we travel through all these edges, raise all the edges and the vertices K I and J because we traveled through all of them. Now there is no other alternate. We are back at L. So we need to travel through the bridge. So let's travel through the bridge LF and raise that edge now. Now we are at F. Let's travel through F, D, D, E and E, C. So raise all the wages and then the vertex which is no longer in use. Now we are at C. From C, let's travel through C, A, A, B and A, B, C. So once we are done, raise those edges. Now again, we are back at C. Let's travel through C, D, D, B and B, F. And we can raise all of them. We have completed our route. So our Euler circuit is writing down all the path we traveled in the consecutive order and that circuit will be F G H I L K I J L F D E C A B C D B F so here we have traveled exactly once through every edge and started and ended at the same point vertex F now what happens if you have a graph which is non-Eulerian, which means a graph having odd vertices? And how to deal with that? That means we need to Eulerize a graph. How can we do that? We can duplicate an existing graph, existing edge. You cannot insert a new single edge. You can duplicate an existing edge. So let's do one example. So a duck tour company wants to design a route which minimizes traveling over any street more than once and start and end at the same location. So this is the map they have. Now we want to look through our possibilities. So first let's design mathematically. That means convert this into mathematical model. Now if you look into it, the vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. If you check all of these vertices, they all are odd vertices. Everything else is even numbered vertices. So this is actually a non-Eulerian graph. So in order to find a starting and ending at the same place, that means we need to find an Eulerian circuit. In order to find an Eulerian circuit, to use even a Fleury's algorithm, what do we need? We need to have all vertices with even degree. So how to make even degree? Without creating a new vertex, a new edge here, we just have to make sure to duplicate some existing edges. So let's do that. We Eulerize this graph. So in the graph, AB is already with our degree. So we can duplicate one more edge. So this will make A with 4 degree and B also with degree 4. Likewise, we can Eulerize other odd degree vertices. Now that we have completed Eulerizing this whole graph, now if you check all the vertices here are with 
even number edges so that means we can use flurry's algorithm to find Eulerian circuit let's say we asked to start and end at this given point you just have to make sure to find the road and it can be an exercise for you find the path now let's move to the last part map coloring a four color problem which was uh, unsolved quite a long time in 1976, Apple and Hagen solved this problem. So, the question here is, using at most four colors, is it always possible to color a map so that any two regions sharing a common border receive different colors? As an example, you could think of states in the United States of America or the countries in Southern America. So you try to pick those either states or countries and model them mathematically into a problem and then you try to see whether you can color using maximum of four colors so that any showering region do not have the same color. So let's begin with just this picture. So if I start, if I say I'm going to color with four colors which are red, green, blue and yellow. I start with first triangle with red. Second one, let's say I'm going to put green. So I have to be careful with the second because I have four sharing regions here. So I need to make sure I'm not getting the same colors with the common borders. So that's very important. Now from two to three, can use a different color let's say blue and a yellow and from yellow to the other side can be different color only important part is board cannot have the same color so in this way we will have painted this graph using four different colors successively now What is the technique? We represent each area of the region by vertices. Like I mentioned, the states or the countries will be considered as vertices. And the borders in between those states or countries are considered as edges. Using four or fewer colors, we color the vertices first of all. And then we need to make sure no two vertices of the same edge receive the same color. Let's again go back to the same example which we colored using four colors. At this moment, we are going to trace into a graph, which means one and two. One with the red color that I picked here, two with green color. The edge sharing one and two does not have the same colors. That's perfectly fine. Now with two, we have 3, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This many vertices. Need to make sure with 2, any single edge connecting with 2 is not connected by the same color. So, in this case, no. And also make sure to match the other relationships too. So the 10 and 9 will have one relation that is also with two different colors. 9 and 8 will have one relation. Again, different color. 8 and 7, different color. 8 and 10 also going to have a relation. So that's also a different color. Now with 3 and 4, again, one edge, two different colors in two sides. With 4, we have 5 and 6, different colors in two different edges. Keep in mind, 3 and 5 are not connected, so they both can have the same color. Now, 5 and 7 has one relation, and 6 and 10 has one relation. So, this will be the map of the problem that we have given. You can simply extrapolate this theory into states, countries 
and that will be the end of map coloring and the basic concepts of graph theory.